Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button there. All right. Bonner Locale. Hello. Good local time to everyone. How are you all doing over there in the chat? I, I am just the slightest bit disorganized this morning because anyone who's actually, you know, talks to me on a regular occasion knows that I haven't really slept much yet. So today we're going to be spending a little bit of time talking about two nations that absolutely need to be addressed. Uh, the song that you were just listening to has something to do with this first nation that we're going to be talking about. Now, an old family friend of one of my longtime viewers and a very close friend of mine was murdered last week in Sweden. At 80 years old, the man was stabbed to death by another Swedish man who happened to owe him a large debt. Now, the 80-year-old man, Hans, he was not a demanding man. He was very kind-hearted. He was very warm and loving. He would have never demanded this debt be repaid. He only wanted to help, even if that help was for the purpose of buying the younger man at 54 years old drugs. But he didn't care if it was for drugs or food or anything else. All he cared about was being a friend, being a neighbor. But he was stabbed to death, brutally. At 80 years old, you expect to die. You most certainly do, but you don't expect to die so violently. You expect to die quietly in your bed of, of illness or just old age. No one deserves that. But the atmosphere of Sweden has become such that any murders which occur are brushed over by the news media, ignored by the people themselves. Despite such a recent increase in the number of cases of lethal violence in 2017 and 2018, they're not talking about this. They're not letting people know that things are getting more violent even as crime goes down in general. For many Swedes, it's as if their country has transformed right in front of their eyes. With gang violence and drug-related crimes contradicting this overall downward trend of crime across the nation. Political discourse in Sweden for years now has increasingly become a farce. As the song I played just now for you at the beginning of the stream so aptly captures. The song, Shibel, uh, by um, Gafal Sarna, whose title roughly translates to squabble or sparring match, captures how Swedish politicians are unwilling to answer the hard questions presented to them in debates. Responding to those questions without any acknowledgement of the complexity or nuance which the Swedish people hope to hear addressed, need to hear addressed. Now, if you're watching this later on BitChute or YouTube, you aren't going to have the song playing at the beginning. Uh, and as such, you can find a link to the song with English subtitles on Angry Foreigners channel down below. I recommend you give the song a listen and read the lyrics because it's actually remarkably powerful for a mashup piece in the way it was designed. It sounds like lighthearted electronica, but it is it is actually so much more. You can see you get to hear these politicians going back and forth with we need to raise taxes, we need to lower taxes, higher taxes, lower taxes. People contradicting themselves as they sit on the stage and generally using a ton of words, but saying nothing. 
It's a sad state of affairs for Sweden, a country that at one point was, was very great. Sweden is a nation which finds itself now precariously balanced on a knife's edge. If they are unable to address the cultural upheaval which mass immigration has helped cause, for fear of being seen as racist or sexist, Sweden's place at the top of national rankings in the world will soon be nothing but a distant memory. Hans, the man who I described murdered last week, has seen both Sweden's best and also now Sweden's absolute worst. It leaves me shaken to think of such an old, kind-hearted man being just murdered. And it is for his sake, and the sake of all Swedes, that I hope Sweden can be honest with itself in the months to come, as the first step to recovery. Sweden has the ability to be great again. And you can call it racist or sexist. You can say it makes you think of, or it makes, it conjures the image of homophobia and Islamophobia to say so. But I believe that Sweden absolutely needs to make Sweden great again. The Swedish people need to embrace just enough nationalism, not an extreme amount, but just enough nationalism to make Sweden great again. But I would absolutely be a hypocrite to point at the splinters in Sweden's eye, given the branches stabbing us in the United States in our eye. Early on the morning of July 4th, just two days ago, a story began making its way across the internet of Hunter Richard, a 16-year-old boy who, when having a midnight snack with a friend at Whataburger in Thousand Oaks, Texas, had his hat stolen and his drink thrown in his face, assaulted all for the reason that his hat happened to be a MAGA hat. And we have that video right here. Let me get that up for you. Okay. This is gonna go great. Um, let's rewind it for you. Pouring the, pouring and turn the on the audio. You ain't supporting shit, nigga. Just in case you didn't see that. Pouring the president. You ain't supporting shit, nigga. He really thinks himself a tough man, doesn't he? Okay. Stealing from a teenager and throwing a drink in his face. It's disturbing where we've gotten to in this country. It's very upsetting. As has been recited so many times on social media, these red baseball caps with the words Make America Great Again inscribed on them are seen by some as indistinguishable from swastika armbands, as hyperbolic and pathetic as that is to say. Symbols, they would describe, of racism, sexism, homophobia, and however many more words they want to throw out. But as can be seen on social media and the language of politicians on the news, they don't actually see this equated with the swastika. They are absolutely jumping through mental gymnastics hoops to fit their words into a manner that allows them to say these things without outright saying, this is a symbol of Nazism. None of them are saying that. They're saying that it represents and conjures an image of Nazism, that it causes them to think 
of racism, sexism, and homophobia in the history of this country. But the people saying this are also a shrinking minority. These people are losing their ground with actions like these, with calls to harassment, crime and violence, such as Maxine Waters and her call to action just a week, a little more than a week ago now, where she said that polit that the members of the Trump administration should receive no rests should not be able to eat at restaurants and should be harassed at every turn. The young man recorded this interaction and uploaded it to social media. And within hours, this offender, this, this punk bitch, to put it bluntly, who stole from a child and threw his drink in his face, was identified as Kino Jimenez and not long after that, in the morning following, uh, the San Antonio bar at which Kino worked, Rumble, fired Mr. Jimenez, stating that this was conduct unbecoming and he was not a person that they wished to be associated with. Likewise, the Green Party of Texas came out last night, or excuse me, this morning, and uh, it is the Green Party of Texas with whom Mr. Jimenez was registered. And I say was because the Green Party announced they were banning him from their political party in a statement made this morning. Uh, the statement read, we all have different opinions of our president, but we don't take it out on innocent kids who just happen to have a hat on. You may not like the hat, or you may not like the president, but you don't show that kind of aggression towards teenagers. It goes against everything the Green Party stands for. We are not violent. We do not take our aggression out on innocent young people. We are handling it in-house. From our point of view, he is banned from being part of our organization. What Kino has allegedly done of his, out of his own will, he has really shed a negative light on our party. He preyed on two young people. I removed him. It's very disturbing. And I agree, I agree completely with the statement presented by this chapter of the Green Party. It is disturbing. And you are free to hold whatever opinions you have on the president and on people who support the presidents. But resorting to this kind of aggression? Well, there are children's shows that use language very simple to explain this in saying, show me a man who resorts to violence and I'll show you a man who has run out of good ideas. This of course comes only days after Antifa violently assaulted a peaceful free speech march held by Patriot Prayer in Portland, Oregon. The Patriot Prayer group has gotten a per had gotten a permit to demonstrate, as well as support from the Department of Homeland Security with regards to securing the park where the march had begun. DHS had assured none of the demonstrators with Patriot Prayer were armed, taking away their uh, their um, cans of pepper spray and any shields or uh, uh, anything that even seemed like it could be used as a weapon before the members of Patriot Prayer were allowed to enter the park. And they willingly gave up their weapons because they weren't there to fight and they weren't even going to make a defense an excuse for having tools that would allow them to hurt others. But DHS's jurisdiction in this situation was only limited to the park where the, uh, where this march were, was to begin. 
And Portland police did not do the same with Antifa, who had gathered in counter-protest outside of the park. No weapons were gathered from Antifa. No one was searched by Portland police in the Antifa counter-protest. And armed with eggs, fireworks, flashbangs, batons, pepper balls, and metal bars, Antifa descended on the peaceful demonstrators, throwing their explosives into the procession as soon as they had crossed into Portland police's jurisdiction and out of the reach of DHS. When Patriot Prayer acted to defend themselves, Portland, pol excuse me, Portland police declared the scene a riot and rescinded the demonstration permit showing how biased and even culpable in the violence that came they were. Not only did Portland police allow uh, the, Dem the uh, Antifa counter-protesters to keep their masks on in violation of Oregon state law with regards to protests, they allowed them to keep their weapons without so much as a pat down to assure that they weren't going to start a fight. They watched without so much as a word as Antifa began throwing fireworks into the middle of a marching procession. And when they charged at anti, excuse me, at Patriot Prayer, initiating the violence and drawing weapons, it was only then that Patriot Prayer were punished. Patriot Prayer were set up by Portland police to be ambushed by these counter protesters. These corrupt police cannot be allowed to do this. These violent children in Antifa can't be allowed to do this. However, despite what members of Antifa might say on social media, they were unquestionably destroyed, routed by the stronger, better trained, and completely unprepared, or excuse me, unintimidated Patriot Prayer members. And there's a very good reason why, explained in a post on an Antifa-related subreddit, which has been making its rounds on social media. And I'm going to read that for you now because from the words of an activist on the side of, of Antifa, the people who are fighting for their rights are pussies. They're not the proletariat. They're not the working class. They are not the beleaguered and uh, um, oppressed minorities. They are the bourgeoisie. They are the upper middle class punks, brats, who just want to start a fight and feel like they're doing something awesome, experiencing the here. Let me read you what he said. I wrote this after feeling the need to put my thoughts on the anti-fascist action I took part in in Portland, but my thread was removed due to brigading and my, ac my account being new. People of color veter veteran anti-fascist perspective on what went down and what we need to do going forward. I was one of the people who turned up to oppose the reactionaries and neo-fascists from Patriot Prayer and the Proud Boys, specifically the 542, who are not just the typical reactionaries of the rank and file Proud Boys, but displayed open Nazi and exterminationist signs and symbols during their pathetic get-togethers. This paragraph, of course, is, there's no evidence anywhere to support this statement but I thought I should read his statement in full, to be fair. But despite him saying this, I'm pretty sure he's interpreting their signs as such when their signs actually hold none of those meeting meanings. 
but he continues. I was involved in the Black Panther Party in the late 1960s to the mid-1970s and took part in various anti-white supremacist actions, one of which landed me in prison, and ultimately that bid what was got me away from Leninism and into anarchism after James Carr gave me his copy of The Conquest of Bread. I feel like a half century of political action and fighting white supremacy gives me the right to lay some thoughts down. Off the bat, I am really annoyed with the quality of turnout here, as opposed to those in previous actions like Charlottesville and Virginia. This was not only dangerous, but made us look terrible. Fascism feeds off displays of strength and victories. Well, they're not fascist, but please, this is your perspective on the matter, I should be fair. This was certainly victory for these scum. A number of people who turned up for the action, the number of people who turned up for the action was fine, considering the small number of the enemy. But the types of people who decided to show up but did nothing and actively hindered the ability for the action to be mobile and effective was way too high. In older days, people who turned up could fight. They were working class or lumpen. They were tough and they put the fear of God into fascist scum. I once saw an iron worker punch a fascist so hard his orbital just folded into itself. Usually we were much more game and the enemy was full of middle-class lames. Now the situation is half the people charging with us are 110-pound white girls who have no business being there, don't throw punches, and simply break and semblance of a, of a compact line, which leads us to being flanked and pushing into a new pockets. Secondly, there were almost zero blue-collar types there, there was only around 10 other black guys that I saw. The majority looked like upper middle class university kids. Again, what are these people doing forming the basis of our street actions against these people? These are, there are several videos of these types being knocked out cold, even when they are attacking the scum with batons and bars. This is exactly what they want being able to portray the revolutionary opposition to them as privileged, soft white people. To an uneducated working class guy who sees these, the fascists come off as tough, working class Joes beating the shit out of soft, privileged idiots. I hate to tell you this, my friend, but you are, a, not you specifically, but this action is being done by soft, privileged, white, middle-class idiots. You are no longer on the side of the revolution that is for the people. I'm sorry, that's just not what's going on anymore. You can cling to your arguments that we're fascist scum, but we are just the people. I am just as poor as you, if not poorer, at this point. Uh, and I, being a 110-pound white girl, well, okay, about 120 pounds these days, no better than to put myself on the front lines and have sense of strategy and tactics to be sure that I don't pose a threat if I take part in action. These people that you're siding with don't. They don't have the experiences of the middle of the, the lower class. They aren't oppressed. They just want to feel like they have some purpose in their life, like they're doing something good. When the reality is they have become the oppressors and they have co-opted your voice, your actions and your words from 40 years ago in order to do it. You shouldn't be mad at the fascist scum as you're calling it. 
you should be mad at these upper class and middle class white idiots. But back to the story, or rather the posts. Another issue is lack of strategy. One second. I'm just going to grab a quick drink. We pushed a dozen of the 542 into the alley behind the bakery, and we were pushing them back on themselves. A bunch of people waving flags then decided to sprint into the middle of us and then break away once the fascists pushed back, leaving a giant hole for them to escape through and rejoin a bunch of the others on the street and outnumber us. Yeah, that's basic strategy. But these people have never been in any sort of violent conflict in their life. So they don't understand holding the line. They're cowards. They have no strength or experience. And this is what's going to happen when you put your line in with soft, weak, white people who have no business taking part in such actions. Where was I? For, uh, from now on, we need designated marshals to organize and direct people like we had in the 90s for the NPA and KKK actions that were highly effective at making us able to control enemies and overwhelm them, despite us being outnumbered. When a bunch of kids who lack street smarts and any fighting ability are charging around all it charging all around all it does is make us look weak even really bad fighters can be effective when they have some direction again this man speaks with great experience and a clear understanding of leadership and urban combat you're not a dumb man sir you're very informed you are very experienced, but you've put your lot in with people who think that just being there and by the right of being female won't be touched, even if they're throwing punches and kicks as weak as those may, may be. Lastly, we need to discuss inclusion, he continues. I saw several POC, people of color, including three extremely brave Muslim women in hijab who were treated like shits by all the white people who treated them like ghosts and made no attempts to even talk to them, let alone encourage them. They were holding signs and shouting at some of the PP people. I don't know what PP stands for here. Oh, Patriot Pride. At some of the Patriot Pride people and several white people stood away from them and when the women tried to interact with them, they straight up ignored them. Inclusion and respect isn't just moral, but leads to increased participation from people of color and other groups who, in the experience of this writer, make far better comrades in a melee than white yuppie hipsters. He's, aside from the language he's using, which I think is a bit loaded, at this point, he's, he's absolutely correct. You need these people on your side because they've actually suffered in their life, which the, the, as he describes them, white yuppie hipsters have not. These people, these women in hijab actually have experienced harassment and even violence, if not from outside sources from their own families. And they're willing to express their strength in moments like this. And if you're going to be on that side of the fight, you need to treat them as your sergeants, not dismiss them and show just who the racists in this matter really are. I know that the author of this post doesn't want to say so, but it's, it's extremely clear in all of this who the actual racists are, who the actual bourgeoisie that need to be fighted 
are. The people who are conquesting for bread are. So many of the people, he continues, at the action were posers and ran back at any actual confrontation. One time this happened, a young white guy who could actually throw down got knocked out because all the people around him ran back to the curb and left him alone against three guys. I, I, I don't care what side he's on. I feel bad for that young man. To be abandoned by your comrades? That is heartbreaking. That shows a weakness in their forces that is in the time of battle always going to be exploited, but in the aftermath, just plain heartbreaking. Sorry for the rant, he continues to say, I know I am probably going to get chewed out by white people for being an emotional nigga, but this has really pissed me off. More than that, though, it has me worried. This has emboldened the fascists online. They're having a field day. More failed actions like these, and they will be emboldened. These fascist pieces of shit are not the soft Richard Spencer types. I, I don't consider Richard Spencer very soft. That man can take a punch. And not only can he take a punch, he can, with dignity, be kicked out of Europe as he was today en route to Sweden. And instead keep his chin up and arrange for a Skype call to speak at the meeting in Sweden or the gathering in Sweden he was meant to speak at anyways. They are working, he continues, and lumpen proles, working and lumpen proles, and they will kick the shit out of most of the types of people we had at the action. My wife was hit by a rock, and I have a few cuts and bruises, but we are both fine. I hope the people who did really well are okay, as some of them had pretty gnarly wounds. I really don't know what else to say. I feel really angry and violated that these pieces of shit can now turn up, promote white supremacy, and beat us. This never would have happened a few years ago, never mind when anti-fascist actions could cripple a fascist day out easily. Perhaps the author of this needs to take the time and recognize that the people he's fighting aren't actually fascists, aren't actually white supremacists, and that they would sooner accept him into their fold and support him as a brother than these so-called anti-fascists ever would. Anti-fascism is stylish for the, as he says, white yuppie hipsters. The, the middle-class idiots with no experience. They want to get out there and virtue signal, but they don't actually want to fight. And I hate to say this because you seem passionate in what you believe, but what you believe is misguided and you are being lied to by many people about what Patriot Prayer, about what Make America Great Again, about what all of these groups actually stand for. They're not racist. They love you as a brother. All you need to do is let them. All you need to do is not call them racists and shit on them just because they didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. The fascists you're looking for came in the clothes of the anti-fascists. They've convinced all of you on the left that they are morally righteous when in fact they intend to destroy freedom itself. 
by convincing you of your weakness. Uh, there was a movie that came out a number of years ago. It was an Adam Sandler movie. And Adam Sandler was experimenting with... Uh, he was experimenting with doing a more serious movie. The film was called Spanglish. But the ending of the film was disgusting to me. At the end of the film, the mother of the, the, the maid in the movie, Adam Sandler's maid, convinces her daughter not to go to a better school, not to become, you know, integrated with society because she would become, in, in the words of the film, inauthentic. This is the problem that the left has right now. They've convinced black people, Mexican people, Central American people, immigrants of all shades to not better themselves at the risk of becoming inauthentic. When in fact, nothing is standing in their way of joining the rest of the country in improving, but the left who would rather exploit them, continue using them as wage slaves, especially the immigrants, as shown so blatantly by, uh, I believe it was Andrea Heard, um, something Heard, the actress who on, who a couple days ago made a tweet telling not the people, who, the, the immigrants who work for her, but her friends about a Hollywood checkpoint that they would need to smuggle their immigrants around in order to get them home so that they could keep their undocumented and underpaid workers, their slaves. The left wants to keep you trapped in poverty and ignorance and weakness by pretending it has to do with honoring your culture instead of allowing these beautiful cultures to not only grow but find new life through integration with the host culture and individuality by their perspective that is brought to the host culture when they are given the opportunities, that better education, that well-paying jobs that they deserve are pursued instead of ignored as somehow an insult to the, the tortures of your culture back home. I mean no insults to those who live in Mexico, to those who live in Venezuela or uh, San, uh, El Salvador or Panama. These are beautiful places but they are beautiful places that have been completely destroyed by cartels and corrupt government figures who don't give a fuck about their people. Here in America, we actually give a fuck about seeing you have a better life because your better life means a better economy for all of us. That is what making America great again means. That is what America first means. It means that if you come here legally as an immigrant, we respect the effort that you've put forth and we want to give you everything that every other immigrant of this immigrant founded country has. 
this is not the beginning of a civil war, as some, <coughs> Alex Jones, <coughs> might want you to believe. The left-wing parties of the United States aren't able to compose themselves and, uh, and return to mannered debate of ideas. And if they aren't, the midterm elections may be over before they've even started. While socialists like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez are able to win handily in district primaries, where only 27,000 of the 215,000 registered Democratic voters in that district turned up to vote, they will find themselves severely outmatched in November when Republican voters are joined by adherents of the walk away movement in stating with their votes that violence, hatred, and division are not what is desired in politics. You're not only going to get your ass handed to you on the left in the streets if you keep siding with these yuppie cunts. You're going to get your ha ass handed to you in general elections for representatives who are dividing the parties of the left completely and senators uh, and senatorial races where entire states, states who may have large major metropolis cities, metropolis cities in them, but growing numbers of people completely disillusioned with the cosmopolitan attitude toward everything. You're going to get yourselves hurt badly if you continue down this road, no matter what, so what part of the left you're on. It's time to reconsider your techniques. And more than that, it's time to reconsider who your enemies really are. Because it's not the patriots who happen to be Christians, but most certainly aren't racists or fascists. As I said before, they are waiting to accept you as a brother or sister. All you have to do is accept them for who they are rather than the lies you've made up about them yourself. Thank you all so very much for joining me for this. It has been an absolutely wonderful talk. This is something I absolutely needed to cover. Um, this video will be up on YouTube a little bit later. But in the meantime, in honor of Hans, the Swedish man who was murdered in cold blood not, not even a week ago, I'm going to finish off the show with that song one more time. It's a very good song. Bonsoir, my chérie.